All right, today I want to talk to you about something a little bit different than usual. I want to look at the new upcoming quarter century rares. They seem to be causing a stir in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. And I thought I would put my input in because we not only play the game, but we also sell cards. So looking at it from both the player's perspective as well as a seller's perspective, we sell cards on eBay, we sell pre-sales, we sell just regular cards, we have a store up there. So we do have somewhat of a unique um, perspective on this because we have a foot in both arenas. So here's the situation. Budget players everywhere are rejoicing and sellers are panicking. Why? Well, the reason for it is it looks like the, the new upcoming quarter century rares are going to be pretty easy to get. And it's just simple supply and demand. And that is what has made the budget players super excited and the sellers very, very nervous. So what I want to say is when it comes to the price of Yu-Gi-Oh cards, you, you all know that the price of Yu-Gi-Oh cards is not determined on whether it's shiny or not, right? You know that the price of Yu-Gi-Oh cards is dependent upon how hard the card is to get. That's it, period, full stop, end. It is all dependent on how hard the card to get is. So that is why Starlights are generally more expensive than, say, collector rares. Because you get a Starlight in one in every other case, roughly. And collector rares, you get about four in a case. And that's why collector rares are more expensive than ultras. Uh, it's just whatever is hard to get is going to be what has value. And so when you start talking about quarter century rares being easier to get, well, what that does is it diminishes the value of them and sellers start panicking because they're putting mass amounts of money into this product and they're wondering, am I going to be able to get it out of it? Am I going to be able to get my money out? Am I going to be able to make money off of this set? Now, budget players are looking at it and they're thinking, this is amazing. I can buy a box or two boxes and really hope to get one of those. So let's look at a couple of the sets that these are going to be in. Because we know several sets that the quarter century rares are going to be in, but we don't have all the information. Here's what we got. Legendary Collection 25th Anniversary. We know that there are quarter century rares in here. They are promos, um, six of them, Blue Eyes, Dark Magician, Red Eyes, the three God cards. Those are all going to be quarter century rare and um, I think you get one of them in quarter century rare per box. So every time you buy a box, you're getting a quarter century rare. And so, you know, that's great for budget players. Sellers, a little bit worried about that. Um, you move down to Battles of Legend. The new Battles of Legend that's coming out. It's going to have more than 20 cards that are quarter century rare. I don't know why they put more than 20. Makes sense that there would be 25. If there's going to be more than 20, why would you just make 21 or 22? So I'm expecting that there's going to be 25 quarter century rares in here. Typically in these um, Battles of Legend boxes, I think typically you're looking at one starlight per case. And if that's, if that's what you're dealing with, then, and you're, now you have 20, you might actually be getting two per case, maybe even four per case. Who knows? We don't, we don't actually know the ratios, but we do know with that number of quarter century rares that it doesn't make sense for them not to give you more 
opportunity to get them or for or for them to be um, easier to pull in the set. Meaning that instead of one per every case, you might get two per every case. So you might get four for every case or three. So, so there's that. And then you go down to Dolus Nexus. Now this is very interesting because this is a core set. And so you have a core set that normally has starlight rares in it, four, five, whatever it is, starlight rares in it. But now they're saying that they're going to give you 25 quarter century rares in this set. So does that mean that we're not going to get starlights? I think most likely. I can't imagine that they're going to give you starlights in quarter century rares, although I would love it. But I don't think they're going to do that. So I think the quarter century rares are replacing the starlights. But now instead of four starlights, there's 25 quarter century rares. My guess is, is that you're probably going to get two or three, or maybe even four of these things per case, which again is going to diminish the value of the card. So you move into the next set and you got the tins. And everybody's super excited about the tins. We weren't sure if we were going to get tins this year. Then all of a sudden you got the announcement of the tins, but they announced that you're going to get a quarter century rare card in every tin. So every tin that you buy, you're going to get a quarter century rare, and there's 16 of them. So if you buy a case of tins, which has 12 tins, then you're going to get 12 quarter century rares out of the 16, once again, diminishing the value of the quarter century rares. So sellers are freaking out, budget players are in their glory. Everybody is trying to figure out what to do with Yu-Gi-Oh sets in 2023 because everything's thrown up in the air. So what I want to say about this is stop freaking out. Okay, stop freaking out. Everybody just calm down. Calm down. It's not that hard to figure out that there's still going to be value in the set. There really isn't. You're still going to have value in the set. So instead of pulling a Starlight Rare out of one of, uh, of two cases and then selling that Starlight Rare for $250, well, in two cases, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to be pulling multiple and so in two cases, you're going to be pulling multiple quarter century rares. Let's say that you're going to be pulling four. Let's be conservative and say there's two per case and you're going to open two cases. You're going to get four of these. Well, chances are you're going to be able to sell them for somewhere around $50 a piece which is going to equal roughly around $200, $250, which is what you were getting when you were selling the Starlights. It's just that you're moving more cards rather than just the one Starlight. Now you're selling multiples at $50 each, but the value is still there. And it's good for the player base. It's good for the sellers because you're going to be making more sales. You're going to have more people coming to your stores. You're going to have more people checking out your stuff. You're going to be uh, having the opportunity to win over more customers. The way that I look at this from, from a player standpoint is I'm super excited because I want these cards. I, I, want, I want all of them. Uh, I want to have these cards and the, the idea that I'm going to be able to go in and get them at pretty much the, the value of collector rares, but they look like starlights. Well, that's fantastic. The second value here is when I get a starlight that's expensive, I don't want to play that. I don't want to put a $400 card in my deck. I really don't. But what if you had a $50 Starlight that was actually playable? I'd play that in my deck. So I, I think another benefit to this is it's going to produce cards that you can actually put in your deck and play. It can make your deck look really good. So that's from a player standpoint. 
from a seller standpoint, I'm super excited about, about the opportunity that is presented before us with the idea of being able to move more cards, meet more people, have more encounters with buyers. I love that. I love the idea that that um, that you're gonna have that when you open up the product that you're not just going through hoping to get one starlight in two cases, but it's more like a collector's rare set where you're pulling multiple chase cards. I love that. Give me that all day long. So from a from a a player standpoint and a seller standpoint. I'm super excited about 2023, the the quarter century rares, and I think everybody just needs to just just calm down. <laughs> just stop freaking out. You we have no idea what the ratios are. We have no idea what the what the cards are going to be that are printed in quarter century rare. Just calm down. Everything's going to be fine. You're going to be able to sell the cards. You're still going to be able to make a profit. And, and players are going to be able to get the cards they want and be able to play them. I think it's a win-win unless Konami fumbles. So let's everybody pray that Konami does not fumble the quarter century rares. I don't think they will. I think they put a lot of thought into this. I think they've made this a, a big push. I don't think they will fumble, but let's not everybody freak out. That's what I have to say about the quarter century rares. I do have one thing to show you. On a video not too long ago, I gave, it was a video, cards you should buy right now, and I gave you a bonus card, and the bonus card was Pot of Greed. And the reason I told you that is because for the first time, I think that there's a real chance Pot of Greed can come off the ban list. Now, I might be wrong, but I just want you to know that I don't just tell you about cards that you should buy because I, I want to make videos. I'm telling you about cards that I'm actually buying. And I got a steal. I got, I got, I got a, I didn't even, I, to be honest with you, I didn't even know this card existed. But I went into my locals, asked them if they had anything, and they, they gave me a stack of cards. And in that stack of cards was this, which I don't know if you can see that, but that is a pot of greed ultimate rare now it's not first edition it's unlimited i think they they charged me about 60 bucks because i'm a friend of the store i don't even know if that was a good price i didn't care 60 bucks it's mine pot of greed ultimate rare i'm super excited about it my name is todd from co2 cards and i am out of here